You really dodged that one, eh, RJ? Trying to get you to be Anthony the whole episode. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. That's just my best friend, Christy's son from the closet, Anthony. <laughs> I don't know how to start this one because usually I got a guest to ask us to solve a mystery. Yeah, it's um, they're they're here right now. Look at that. It's my best friend, uh, Janthony. Uh... Oh, hi, Janthony. <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Janthony, you're so uh, you're such a nice young man. No. Why do you have like a like a ten year old as your best friend, RJ? Oh no, I'm not ten. I'm 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 forty eight. <laughs> you sound forty eight. Thank you. Usually people just think I sound like RJ doing a stupid shitty voice. No, 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 no. I would never. I would never. Thank you for coming in to the detective agency today, sir. You're welcome. And RJ. Way to bring in some customers. I really appreciate that. Oh yeah, no problem, man. I uh I, I'm always out there hustling. I can tell, yeah. I can tell. Rick, just by the look of Janthony over here, what do you think? You think we should just take on whatever Casey says? Well, before he even knows what it is, should we take it on no matter what? Yeah, Jan- uh, Janthony sounds like a reputable guy. Thank you. <laughs> so Janthony, what do you want us to solve for you today since you came in here? Oh, well, um, uh, uh, RJ says he always forgets to ask what the episodes are about, so. <laughs> oh, yeah? Probably should have ironed this out beforehand. No, I, no, no, I feel like I asked the proper question. You're the one who's coming in and wants to know, what's the, what's the mystery you're looking for, uh, Jan? Here, I'm, I'm, I'm shy, so I wrote it on this post-it note that I'm going to slide over the table with my eight. Teenage long fingers. Oh, you're related to Christy. That's right. She's <laughs> she's my mom. Oh, Chris, you're Christy's son. See, I, I'll give you a family discount. I'm the one she keeps in the closet. <laughs> That's good. Good, good to know, Janthony. Oh, so you want us to solve uh, what exactly is the Mandela effect? That's right. RJ just said he remembers now. <laughs> RJ remembers. What does RJ have to do with anything, Janthony? Well, I, I, I was just whispering to him, saying I do remember that was the case we were going to do. I just okay. forgot before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Me too, Janthony. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you know what? Guess what, Janthony? You came to the right place. We're all we've got all our ducks in a row. Oh, I'm ecstatic. So, you know what? I think, RJ, you don't have to be here for this episode. I think Janthony can be... No, that's okay. I think Anthony's getting tired. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to lie down in the corner. Okay. He'll, he'll pipe in every once in a while. Okay, Janthony. An elite team of private detectives. What if balloons are aliens? Maybe that's the key component we're missing. Cover-ups. John's guilty. Mysteries that need to be solved. Maybe Mormons need mountains. Richard, shut up. Today we're going to solve what exactly is the Mandela Effect. Now, I'm sure you guys both know what the Mandela Effect is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, well, let's hear what you, out of your guys' yaps what you think it is. It's, uh, it's what a bunch of fucking lunatics <laughs> go way too hard in the paint on when they just aren't aware of the fact that they're making a very easy thing to fuck up and misremember. That's okay. very simple. All right. That was a fucking little long-winded answer. Yeah. What was? What's your short-winded one, Ricky? Um, I, isn't that that professor that like affects kids in class? <laughs> professor Mandela. <laughs> you went. You went to uh, homeschooling. I don't know what Uncle Nelson yeah. did when he came over, but <laughs> <laughs> your uncle was Nelson. Oh yeah, that's his name, Nelson. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Well, Mandela effect's basically a memory you're sure you've had, but it isn't based in factual history or information that you can actually go look up anywhere. Most of the Mandela effects are very specific. Uh, now, the term Mandela effect refers to Nelson Mandela, actually. Famous South African Nelson Mandela. Do you guys know who Nelson Mandela is? Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, what do they call him, presidents there or no? He was the first, yeah. The first. Yeah, time. yeah. And then they threw him in jail. No, opposite. He was uh, apartheid. He threw them in jail. Oh, he was in jail, and then 
yeah, during apartheid, okay. he was in jail for a lot of it because he was an anti-apartheid yeah. uh, activist. Then when he got out, he became a couple years later became the first democratically elected president in South Africa. Uh, he was actually in jail for 27 years. He helped end apartheid. Uh, he led the country for a few years, became an international celebrity with his motivational and inspirational life that he had lived. Uh, yeah. One of those guys. Yeah. That's what I said. You don't remember? Yeah. Oh, shit. We all remember the same. He died in 2013. Uh, some people don't remember it that way, actually. Some people believe that he died in the 80s in prison, sparking international headlines and news stories showing riots in the streets. So that's where the whole thing's born. It's from a lady named Fiona Broom. She, uh, one of those people that believe that. Like, she thought of it at some point and then realized he was still alive and went, huh, that's weird. Fiona Broom is a supernatural investigator slash consultant from the U.S. I was like, supernatural consultant? That's amazing. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. That sounds like a good gig. It's a fucking great gig. If you can pull that shit off, you got charm. I love it. I, anyways, what that means, she consulted for like ghost hunter shows and shit like later on. But yeah, she got her interest in the supernatural as a young girl on family vacation. They were in a hotel called Wentworth by the Sea in Newcastle, New Hampshire. And her and her brother followed a strange looking maid around the hallways until the maid just disappeared right in front of their eyes. They went, wow, that's weird. Ghosts exist. And she, like, basically just started researching ghosts for the rest of her life. Sounds like they were stalking a lady who successfully evaded them. Yes. She knew how to tuck into, like, a hallway before the kids yeah. could fucking annoy her. Somewhere. She was probably terrified. Yeah. Didn't speak English. <laughs> Hello, towel. <laughs> yeah, so she actually is claims i don't know if this is true but she started one of the first ghost hunting websites in the mid 90s i don't know if it's one of the first or if there's a hundred before but she definitely had a ghost hunting website or ghost uh sighting website it's not really hunting she never really hunted ghosts on the website she had posted over 500 articles about the place that she had gone and the research she had done regarding all things ghosts she doesn't really look for the limelight with like she doesn't go full ghost hunter with this shit but she's like she has been on television just once though her research and investigations do predate the ghost hunter television shows. And like I said, the reason she's a consultant is because she's worked on many of these productions uh, on a few occasions. So she still has a bunch for ghost hunting stuff online on YouTube. Uh, let's, let's hear a little bit from Fiona. I want to play a little clip of her. Do we get ghost. to see what she looks like? Uh, actually, no, which is kind of sad. I'll play her a little story here that she tells. She's actually talking about the Mandela effect a little bit in this video. I thought Nelson Mandela had died in prison. I thought I remembered it clearly, complete with news clips of his funeral, the morning in South Africa, some rioting in the cities, and that heartfelt speech by his widow. But then I found out he was still alive. My reaction was sensible. Oh, I must have misunderstood something on the news. I didn't think about it again for many years until in the VIP suite at Dragon Con, Shadow yeah, I'm going to stop it there because we're going to okay. talk about Shadow. Okay, Miss, what do you got for this? Dragon Con. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't think That's... about it again until at Dragon Con Shadow. <laughs> at Dragon Con, Shadow, one of the top, the member of the top event security. Anyways. So well, some burnt the fuck out security guard at yeah. an anime event c convention. I That's got to be what that is. I agreed I've, with her. <laughs> I, I listened to a bunch of different stuff about Mandela Effect this the, week just to kind of get me into like how i'm going to put this together kind of thing and everybody who talks about fiona broom when they talk about their security guard they chill, don't call him shadow they're like let's call him bruce let's call him bill nobody wants to say shadow i'm calling him fucking shadow shadow you're a legend buddy uh yeah it's probably some <laughs> fucking guy like missing both his front teeth with like tattoos on his eyes and a fucking like <laughs> bullet and it's just like yeah they don't want they don't want you to know but nelson mandela yeah, he's dead. <laughs> and she was like, that is so interesting. <laughs> I was but I also love how she's like, I had the sensible thought that, oh, I must have misremembered. And then I decided to be batshit fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, she gave herself credit for being sensible and yeah. then went the complete opposite direction oh, in the next see, sentence. You'll see what just, she does. Like, okay, I just so want you to know, I, didn't I even was think about sensible. That until she said that. Yeah, she 
I, she I, always, I believe her. I yeah, believe she, her. I'm in. <laughs> she always <laughs> says with her ghost hunting stuff that she wants to believe that ghosts exist, except for if they're like, if it's a positive encounter or like a neutral encounter, she always believes the person. And if it's a negative encounter, she just looks for reasons for it not to be a ghost. So she just wants to make people like, take away their whatever sorrow or whatever from the ba- people that have bad experience, but the good people, she just wants to like encourage them to buy her book. You know what I mean? Like that's what this whole thing is. She's that lady, which is fair. And it, honestly, I think it's a perfectly okay way to make money, making people feel better about themselves with their crazy shit that goes on in the brain. I personally think that that's what that- psychiatrists do. This is what lots of people do. Make people feel better about their shitty, crazy life. Uh, yeah i mean that's that's a fair argument i guess but I, that that I is disagree. probably more what it is i disagree also but i think it's it's i mean it, she was probably just like i had the sensible thought and then she was like and then i wanted to buy another car so <laughs> yeah no i don't think she makes a shit ton of money maybe she does i i honestly i think i went and looked for books and stuff does They're she not work on a any- normal job uh, I'm gonna say no. She's got a publisher yeah, and stuff. She makes so she, enough money doing it, then, for sure. Yeah, she doesn't do much work for television anymore. She doesn't want to be on TV. She says it a lot, but she still goes and guest speaks at all the paranormal and sci-fi conferences. One of them being Dragon Con. Dragon Con is actually huge. I didn't realize such it's such a big uh, sci-fi nerd fucking convention. Lots of people go. It's one of the big ones. It's not uh, San San Fran Comic Con or anything like that. But Dragon Con's pretty fucking big. So and this is where the Mandela effect is born. So at the 2009 Dragon Con, Broom was having a conversation uh, about whatever in the green wo- room with another panelist. And I don't know, they're talking about the weird shit they've seen on their jobs. And then one of the security guards who they named Shadow with an E, everywhere else he has an E, so it's Shadow. Oh. <laughs> uh, he pipes in and he says, this reminded him of how people think Nelson Mandela died in prison during the 80s. So you hear kind of right what you said earlier. He just interrupted the ladies. Fiona steps back a bit because she was one of those people. She thought he was dead. <laughs> Fiona steps back a bit because his eyes were wild with rage and violence. <laughs> <laughs> and he had the distinct smell of methamphetamine emanating <laughs> off of him. <laughs> yeah. And she, she just went, wait, he's not dead. And then looked it up, and he wasn't dead. It was 2009. He still had another couple of years left in him. So she just thought it was a weird false memory that she'd had. Uh, it was a vivid weird memory because she said she remembered the funeral. Like I said, she remembered the memorials and the South African people. And she also remembers the riots on the TV. Uh, other panelists in the green room confirmed that they remember Mandela's death on TV in the 80s. So some even went as far as saying they remembered the wife's eulogy. Now, this at this point, because everyone's agreeing with this, crazy fact she's a little bit floored and doesn't really she's like wow that's interesting from a paranormal sense what could be going on here so had the other people remember this as well she's like now she's starting to get curious so she thinks to herself i don't really know these people and they all remember it the same way what am i going to do to like investigate this more so she's telling her book editor about this one of her publishers and her publisher says why don't you just make a website and maybe we'll get some traction maybe we'll get some more people who say that they remember this kind of stuff so then they decided the name Mandela Effect to like shorten it. And that's the, when MandelaEffect.com was born. It was like more of like a blog type website and you could just leave comments. It's like kind of like the way old Facebook used to be, I guess. But it was just basically about like, do you remember Nelson Mandela dying? And then people would comment and then she would comment back. Within a few years of the website. And it was just her. Her responding to people like, oh, no yeah. way, me too. No, no. <laughs> there was lots of people, actually. Like, within a few years, uh, the website being up, she had hundreds, uh, if not thousands, of comments on her blog entries with people saying that not only do they remember the death of Nelson Mandela in the 80s, they also remember the death of Billy Graham, who hadn't died yet either. He's a televangelist from the States, civil rights leader from Charlotte. Much like Nelson Mandela, many people thought that he died, and they also remember the telecast of his funeral. Lots more examples start pouring in. Slowly, though, like a thousand people a day is a lot. It's not super lots, but it's a lot. Fiona just thought this was fascinating, and she was, like, watching everything, and, like, she would stop people who went violent or crazy with it, but she would let a lot of conspiracy theorists just go off, which I find fun. And she just watched way more traffic on her website than she ever thought. Honestly, and she had a hard time keeping up with all the moderating of it, uh, and she couldn't afford the 
I don't know, fees for putting up a website. I guess lots of traffic. So does she does she think it's ghosts? No, she just, she thinks it's completely separate. This is just, just oh just okay. She so there's a ghost hunter who also was like, she I have just, a random thought. Yeah, yeah. She just noticed okay. a weird pattern and then she said, oh, let me investigate it. Yeah, it's like paranormal. I was having a harder time trying to figure out how she wrapped her mind around thinking this was ghosts. That is the solve that I want to hear. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I'm sure it's ghosts at the end of this now. So yeah, she had way more traffic than she'd ever thought. So she was taking up a lot of her time. But then she said it was worth it because she was going to like take that and kind of write a book about it. About how thousands of people are just remembering a history that just simply was not true. With this many people, she didn't think it could be a coincidence. So there's something going on. The other differences between historical fact and memories of people start popping up on the blog as comments. I'll talk about the more Mandela effect things in a couple minutes. We'll just go through the little bit of history here. So in 2013, the Mandela effect went viral. Because George Takai caught wind of the Berenstain Bears Mandela effect. So Sulu posts his memories of the Berenstain Bears being spelled with the E instead of the A. And this made it real go like go fucking actually viral. So Mandela effect websites started getting hundreds of thousands of visitors daily. And it was apparent that the Mandela effect was here to stay. Here's some examples of Mandela effect and some of the stories that go along with them. So I don't know if you guys have heard any of these or if you believe in any of these Mandel effect ones, but let's talk about a couple of them. I don't know. Do you guys know any off the top of your head? I know that um, Pikachu one. Oh, okay. The which the what's the Pikachu one? Say it. The one whether or not it has a stripe on its tail. Mm. And it doesn't matter how many times I see it, I'm never gonna fucking remember what the correct answer is. I thought it was his ears. Was it his could ears? be that. Is Maybe that's the Mandela effect? effect. What's the Mandela effect for Pikachu? Oh, yeah, that's probably it. We could be here all day. It's the tail. You're right, the tail. But there's oh, never okay. been a black bar at the edge, end of his tail. A lot of people do claim there's another Pokemon one, though. You guys Pokemon kids? Like, you guys seem like the proper age for that. I'm a yeah, little old. Mean, yeah, I, but I, I, I don't have a memorized. I, like, I know a handful of them. I know the ones from Reddit. Like, I know Pikachu and Vaporeon. That's about it. Is it the Charizard molested Ash in the show? That's fact. Historical oh. fact. <laughs> That's not even Mandela effect. Everyone knows Charizard's a rapist. So the ghost hunter is not arguing that one. No, no, never. <laughs> Her and Scorpion are on the same page. <laughs> What's the big rock one that's uh, got uh, like a like snake? It's a big long Onyx? rock snake. Okay, how do you spell that? Uh, O-N. Oh, fuck. Is it I-X? Y-X. I would say Y-X. I thought it was Y-X, but I don't know anything it's, about Pokemon, but it I-X, is I-X. So. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people claim that it's IX, so that's the other Pokemon one. But that's such an easy I thing. I don't understand how any of these are like, oh my goodness, something's a muck. Because some- there is such a thing as like collective consciousness, though, when you, things are referenced nonstop. Like something oh, like the, the collective word consciousness Onyx. is that at, for English speakers, we were taught that Ys and Is can be interchangeable, and we just picked one in our head. That's not a collective consciousness. This is just. And they're on misfire. Well, no, I mean, but that, but that's what you're saying is that it's like if something's like in the zeitgeist, the same thing. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. We should be arguing this at the end. No, no, that's okay. This is fair. Yeah, I, but... stop arguing with me. I'm right. I... <laughs> Save it for the end. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, Richard. Uh, yes, Jer- Jeremy. I two two, <laughs> two two things. Oh, sorry, I just made the two sign and poked you in the eye from all the way over here. <laughs> I... I keep I keep eating these Cheetos and my my very long fingers burst through the bottom of the bag. Do you have any larger bags of Cheetos? Yes, Rick has all the Cheetos in his room. Go rifle through his stuff. Don't worry. About okay, it. I will be sure to touch everything in search of them. Okay, perfect. That's exactly how also, I Also, just really quickly, you didn't mind that I overwrote your Starfield save, right? Thank you. Okay. Somebody getting fucking done. G. Anthony's not leaving this goddamn place. So another one, there's a couple of Star Wars ones. Do you guys know any of the Star Wars ones? Oh, um, 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 fuck no. Lots of people claim that C-3PO has a silver leg in the old movies. Yes. But like, I don't remember that. And I'm a Star Wars person. I'm not a Star Wars person, but I also don't remember him having a different colored leg. Well, they do it in the new movies just to be funny about it because that's a Mandela effect thing, right? Mm. Don't, don't they give him like a silver arm in the fucking later movies or something? Yeah, but I thought that happened because in the prequels, something got ripped off. Anyways, whatever. Yeah, whatever. It's not, I don't remember that being the case in the old movies, but this is one that I, I know this isn't a Mandela effect. I just thought this was the line. You know, the, Luke, I am your father. Yeah, he says, no, I am your father. Yeah, it's Luke, I am your father. It's not 
what that says, but that's been said so many times in like pop culture references that we that's all think it's that. What I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. See, but I never like remember hearing it from the movie. I only remember hearing it from other people. So that's literally just words right. changing though. That's not really like anything like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, you could probably credit that's just one guy heard it wrong and like I fucking credit Family Guy with 90% of what the fucking Mandela effect is because they're just writing references off of memory in there. I agree with you to a point, but there's other things at play here. So another good one is Looney Tunes, just the way it's spelt. And I, I mm. honestly thought it was spelled this way, but I was wrong. Looney Tunes mm. is L-O-O-N-E-Y-T-U-N-E-S. And I always thought Correct. it was like cartoons, tunes, T-O-O-N-E-S. There's a couple that got me here. They're saying Alexander Hamilton's Mandela effect. Like, who's Alexander Hamilton? He, oh, fuck. What the fuck was he? He wasn't, he wasn't president. The founding father. But like yeah. a, a lot of people think he's a president. Yeah, but that that's just Americans being Americans. That's just yeah, what we do. That's true. I, I don't agree with that one. I think that one's stupid because people could just when you're learning about the founding fathers, you're learning about presidents and shit. It's all just stored in the same spots. So you kind of like, oops, I oh yeah, he's not a president. Someone could have got you with that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Here's one that I was that got me a little bit because I always thought this was no. Hold on, back up. Yeah. It's because people are stupid. And he's on fucking money. Say what? They're stupid because they don't have money. Because he's, he's on, money. on money. He's on the $10 oh, I got bill. You. Yeah, yeah. It's just like people think Benjamin Franklin was a president. Yeah, they're fucking idiots. Yeah. Okay. It's like, no, Benjamin Franklin was famous because he got electrocuted by a kite. Come on, people. Yeah, and he, <laughs> was, with it. And he was a whore. <laughs> so the next one was uh, Curious George is one. You guys know the Curious George one? Yeah, is it whether or not he's got a tail? Yeah. Yeah. All monkeys have tails. What kind of question is that? Well, not Curious George, but yeah, everyone nah, seems to yeah. be. But that would be why we add a tail. Like, the logic right. just pushes you there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he doesn't look like a chimp. He looks That's like true. a monkey. He's just a little monkey probably mutilated at the pet store to get his tail cut off like dogs It's because, do. yeah, he was a working monkey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want him to escape using his fucking... Right, like, leg. what if he gets caught in the gate when he's hurting the sheep? You gotta... <laughs> exactly. Uh, another one's the Snow White one. Do you guys know the Snow White one? Uh, I was going to say it's something with a mirror. I don't know what it is. Mirror, but... mirror on the wall. That's not actually the line. The line's magic mirror on the wall. Who cares? That's just a misremembering, in my opinion, that one. There is one, like, one that I, gets me. And I was like, I still swear to fucking God. Jif peanut butter? Jiffy. One F. Yeah, people, yeah, but people think it's Jiffy peanut butter. I don't know. I never thought that one. No. Uh, here's another stupid one. Is Oscar Meyer like the Wieners? Just the way Meyer spelled? Like how do you spell yep. it? Oh, M E Y E R? No. No, it's Air. M A. Like, yeah. Uh, My baloney has a first name. It's O S C A R. Come on, Rick, finish this song. My baloney has a second name. It's. Come on, Rick. H A R D O N. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that sounds like that's a good sales pitch. <laughs> this next one kind of got me too because I'm just shitty at geography, but like I could have swore it was this, but maybe it just comes shitty. Where is New Zealand in relation to Australia? So if you look at um, Australia, what part? Uh, like, where is it? Directions. South. Everything south. south. Well, no, it's like it's like you just keep working west, down west of it, right? <laughs> Yeah, some people would swear it's on the northeast side, but it's actually on the southeast side. Southeast? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. But I think that's just shitty geography. I don't fucking know that. I feel like it's because... I, none of like... these have sounded like... <laughs> I'm, I'm doing the like... light ones first. I'm doing the light ones first. I think it's because of how they, they do maps. It's just like when you have like Hawaii on a map, it's in like a square... And it's not yeah, actually yes. where it is on the map. It's like beside you know I mean? Alaska. Yeah, Alaska and they're like, like sitting on their own little... Yeah, they're just like, oh, by the way, we took this picture of Hawaii. It's right here. But it also depends who you're asking. Because like, if we're in the US, we hold the map like this. Whereas in Australia, <laughs> they hold it like this. So to them, <laughs> that's north. Oh, he, yeah. You flip the map over for the listening audience. <laughs> I have a real map here <laughs> that I flipped over. Yeah. I'm just doing the light ones first because some all these ones so far just sound like oops I fucked up and I don't remember. Casablanca has one. Do you know that one? No. Oh, uh, is it the line? Yeah, it's the play it again, Sam. Hmm. Lots of people remember Humphrey Bogart saying this. I actually remembered it being like this, but I think it's just because of pop culture. But it's actually like Ingrid Bergman's character Elsa saying play it, Sam, not play it again, Sam. It's such an iconic movie that it's been fucking 
plastered through pop culture for 50 years, a hundred fuck yeah. almost a hundred years. I'm sorry. That's just the way we're going to mix mash shit up, especially if we don't watch Casablanca once a year. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a good one. This is one that I actually like. This one blows my mind a little bit. It's the fucking Shazam one. Cause I swear to fucking God, you guys know the Shazam one? Yes. It's that Shaquille O'Neal, right? Was in a movie or was it Sinbad? Okay. It's Shazam. Are you talking about that one where the kids become superheroes? <laughs> no, that's the 2019 uh, movie Shazam. recently. No, there's one from yeah. the 90s. <laughs> well, <there's... laughs> that's the DC movie. We're not talking about Shazam the DC. No, movie. but she... okay. Maybe... Let me see if I remember this right. Shaquille O'Neal was in a movie called Kazam in the 90s. Correct. And people think that Sinbad was in a movie called Shazam. Yes, and it was okay. similar plots. Where they're both genies and they got kids that like needed their help, and then at the end it was like a feel good ending kind of thing. Now yeah. I fucking swear to God, I remember both these movies. I still do to this day. I remember there's a mm. fucking Shazam movie. I remember him in fucking parachute pants, like floating fucking cross legged. I fucking remember this. Why? Because our brains can be tricked. But I mean, I don't really necessarily think it exists. I can't think it existed because it doesn't exist. You fucking look everywhere. You could scour the internet all you want. You're not going to find a copy of Shazam. But like when I first heard about this, I was like, of course I remember that movie with Sinbad, but it doesn't exist. Never did. Yeah, but he was in something. He's in lots of movies back in the day. Uh, Sinbad was like the, I don't know, it was four or five year span there where he was doing like major movies with lots of stars. Like, fuck, he did that Jingle All the Way movie with Schwarzenegger, right? Like, that's a huge right, movie for a right, guy like that. Right. Yeah. But like, but Shazam has a big, actually, like a bigger backstory. It got sold a lot more on the internet because there's this one guy on Reddit, I guess, uh, early days of Reddit. His name is Don. He posted a story about working at a video store in the 90s. Now, he says one of his responsibilities in the store was to order new movies to be rented out. And he rem- remembers specifically ordering Shazam, two copies of it, both of which were rented quite a bit, actually, he says. Uh, and he said a lot of people returned it saying there was problems with the the movie. So he would have to get it back and he rewound it and like watch the whole thing. And he'd never have problems with it. But he like lays out the entire plot of the movie start to end. I don't know. Pretty good. Then he remember he also he says he also remembers Kazam, which I do as well, uh, ordering one copy of the Shack one. He says that one didn't do as well. And then he lays out the entire plot of Kazam. Which he could have watched Kazam the day before and just made changes. But I mean, for his Reddit post. But he says Shazam was read far more. And he swears up and down that it existed. Uh, then he puts up a, like, $1,000. If anyone can find me a copy of Shazam. Some other guy on Reddit finds, his name's Hoser505, which I found was fun. Uh, he found an old videotape that had, like, his homemade label. And his mom's handwriting that says Shazam on it. So he's like, I found it, guys. They can't erase everything on us. And he pops it in, and it's the Shaq Kazam. But that one went on for, like, months of everyone talking about the Shazam one. So that one got kind of, like, more embedded into, like, the whole Mandela effect thing that was going on. Like, it was kind of hot at the time. I get that one. I don't know why that one got stuck in me, but it did, for sure. I I just think it's in human nature to, like, not admit you're wrong. That could be part of it too. <laughs> and like, especially when you have other people immediately being like, yeah, no, me too. You're like more emboldened. Like, see, God damn it. He thinks so. You know what I mean? For it's sure. Just like, it's just confirmation bias. Like we're going to get into like some psychology in a bit about how this fucking your brain's a fucking asshole. And I didn't realize how much of an asshole it was. There's a couple more here. Like the Monopoly man. Do you guys know that one? Monopoly man has a monocle apparently in the other universe. Mm. Never had a mon- monocle in my brain, but. It's right. not the Mr. Peanuts. That's the guy who had the monocle. Yep. Uh, Lindbergh Baby. That's another good one, which I'm going to do an episode on the whole Charles Lindbergh thing eventually anyway. Ooh, go back to our roots. Yeah. Amelia Earhart's just female Lindbergh, so it should be easy. That's right. Yeah, Lindbergh Baby. People remember that the kid was kidnapped, never be found again. They actually did find a baby corpse. But a lot of the old timers will talk about how they never found that baby. It's like, well, you just never read the paper that day. You know what I mean? Like, that's right. all. Here's one that blows my mind, too, because this one I fucking swear to God, too, is the Fruit of the Loom one. You know this one? Like the logo for Fruit of the Loom? What's the logo is for it, Fruit of the Loom? 
you know? It's just a bunch of fruit. Yeah, me and my brain, it's a bunch of fruit, but it had a cornucopia in the background, like a fucking Horn of Plenty thing. Oh, um, yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, that one, I swear up and down, it used to have a little fucking... It could go either way for me. I feel like it looks better with the cornucopia. They should do I, that. They, they should. should. <laughs> <laughs> Lean into it, you know? For sure. That one, I agree. They just do that and then lean into it, for sure. The, everyone would be like, see, Mandela Effect's real, and they would get so much business. I fucking love it. They can even say, like, going back to our old logo and watch everyone lose their fucking mind. Mm -hmm. The OG logo. Uh, Life is like a box of chocolates. It's not that in the movie. It's my mother always said. I'm like, that's not even a fuck. You just cut out my mother always said. Yeah. What the (laughs) fuck? I, 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 you were about to throw me for a loop. I was like, "That's definitely the fucking quote." <laughs> so, I watch Forrest yeah. Gump once a day, every day. <laughs> I can quote it right now, Jen A. I put it in my team's calendar. Is learning time. That's <laughs> <laughs> how I know about life. If that autism man can succeed, this autism man can succeed. Wow. <laughs> Lots of people think sex in the city when it's sex and the city. Uh, Flintstones. People think it's just Flintstones. That's stupid. Yeah, so that's basically, I gave the good portion of the ones that exist. There's probably some more that I missed out on, but like... Uh, what about the uh, uh, ob- objects in Mirror may-, may be closer than they appear the the thing on, on car side view mirrors? That's not a thing? Uh, no, it, it is, but it says something different. If you look at objects in mirror, maybe closer than they appear is what I remember. Is that not what it was? Yeah, it's uh, objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Oh, uh, yeah, because you can't really say may because it's a fucking scientific factor closer. Right. Yeah, see, that's just it. <laughs> okay, I didn't see that one, but yeah. They were always are. It was never maybe. Supposedly. That's what I mean, though. It's like, but where, you know, like when I think of that, I can hear someone saying it because as a child, I was not given attention. I was placed in front of a television. So people for sure repeated that shit on TV. And that's why people think of things that way. For sure. Mm. That's basically like the history. It still goes on today. The whole Mandela effect thing. People still share memes with it all the time. And people like it's pretty, actually pretty popular on TikTok. If you look up Mandela effect, there's fucking lots of videos, people pointing out new shit every day. And okay, cool. Sure. So what could this be? What is the Mandela effect? Where is this coming from? South Africa. Yes, they come from South Africa. Uh, I think this all all these theories kind of like go into one big like everything kind of does it, but we'll, we'll see what you guys have to say. So the first thing is like childhood amnesia, which is kind of like hitting on what Rick was just, or RJ was just talking about how he was just like stuffed in front of a TV as a child. And then when you're growing, like when you're growing up, you're, so is your brain, right? Your brain's still growing all the way into like your mid twenties, basically. So when you're a kid, you form a lot of short-term memories, but they don't always get stored for or changed into a long-term memory. The younger your memories happen, the less likely you are to remember it. So like, just for fun, what's your earliest memory? And how old were you about? I was about 27 and I had nacho <laughs> fries. That was about Damn, an dude. hour ago. Welcome to the world, buddy. <laughs> they were fucking good. I've got I got more inside. So <laughs> they salivated my right brain. Now. That's the only thing you remember is your last meal. Good job. I can't really go back much further than that. No? That's about <laughs> it. You were here this weekend telling me memories. What do you got, RJ? Anything any good ones for I want to see what RJ's for. If if it's you being hit, please tell more details, much you can remember. No, I don't think um no. I mean I I was I was much more certain uh and, and aware of reality when i was getting hit um <laughs> i uh i think they waited a little while i was older no i i have this weird memory of being like i i this is what's crazy is i don't think it's true and i don't think it's real because there's no fucking way i remember something from being one but i was in the hallway outside my my parents bedroom because I pissed myself, I remember this, okay. um, and I, I, and I just have like that memory in my head of it. And uh, there's a picture of me in in the thing I remember I'm wearing, and it's a fucking onesie, and I'm like walking around, and I'm clearly like a baby. So I don't, I don't think it's real, and it's the, it's in there for some reason. Maybe it's crossed with like you know what I mean. Like I don't, I don't trust it, but. 
that that I mean that's the only thing I could qualify. Okay. You honestly, my for, my earliest thing I can remember is like being in a a sandbox digging deep enough to like hit water, and I remember being like, "I found water. There's water in the sand." Can you fucking believe it? I didn't say fucking, but I probably thought. Yeah. And they're like, Richard, you can't get rich off of it. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> now, the, but RJ, that could have been when you were like three or four, because usually they say you don't really remember anything before the age of three, usually three and a half. Yeah, I think that tracks. I mean, I, I think I just misconstrue it with what I, I mean. All kids clothes look the fucking same. So who knows? But I, I also know that I've remembered my first memory because it's been asked to me a lot throughout my life. And I kind of hold on to that, too. So maybe it's just me remembering me remembering. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. So you kind of like make a memory regardless of even if it's the real memory or not. Anyways, fucking brains fuck. Yeah. So, yeah, you're pretty unlikely to remember anything. And as you get older, TV shows you watched or like stuff you read during your like three to nine age just get a bit fuzzy and it's pretty unlikely for you to remember anything and during that time very specifically you can remember broad strokes more than anything oh dude you want to hear something funny i remember fucking like and this is probably why i'm the way i am now but i remember being like five and uh being so upset that like i couldn't like read well like i felt like i like i didn't know how to read like i was in kindergarten just learning and I was like, this is ridiculous. I should be so much further. <laughs> and I was, I was, I was, I just kept, I would ask my mom every day for Hooked on Phonics. <laughs> uh, Hooked on Phonics is such a good unethical episode because that guy just ripped everyone off. There was no science behind any of that. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I just, I heard someone on TV say, well, you, they'll teach you how to read. And I was like, oh, thank God. There's hope for me. <laughs> <laughs> Never really helped anyone. Which is so you you kind of lucked out they didn't spend the ninety nine ninety nine for all six lessons. Yeah, yeah, no. It turns out it's it's okay if you don't know how to read. So yeah, you, you've you've been doing good. I'm doing so fine. Far. Yeah, yeah. So you remember broad strokes? It could have always been called like I didn't really talk about the Baron Stain or Baron Steen Bears in our thing because this this is the big one that got everyone to like notice this. Like it's Baron Stain Bears. It always has been Baron Stain Bears, not Baron Steen Bears. When you're a kid and you read a book, it's not like you're looking at something very specific like that. You just remember like Berenstain and that's the end of it. If you had a bunch of Jewish friends, it's a Steen. Like who the fuck knows? You know what I mean? Like where the Steen right. comes from or A and E are interchangeable a lot of time. So you could have just remembered it that way. And somebody told it you it was that and you went, oh, okay. The problem with the whole like childhood amnesia thing is that like everybody's remembering the same shit across. Like, you know what I mean? So it's probably not childhood amnesia. It probably just has a bit to do with childhood amnesia, really. Because if you think about it, the older crowds, they remember the Lindbergh baby thing, but they don't know the Pokemon ones because they never really experienced it as an adolescent or like as a child. But mm -hmm. like someone like me and you don't really remember the Lindbergh thing. We just read about it as an after fact. So but we'll probably remember the Pokemon one, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just had connections. There's no connections to all the other things. So it has to do with like age group and connection, I believe, part of it. I, I agree with that. And I think the emotional toil of, you know, the a missing baby and finding out that Pikachu doesn't have a stripe on his tail is equal, uh, all things considered. <laughs> I know you're being like facetious. I'm not. No, I'm being dead serious. I, rem I do remember that vaguely. And I was like, what the fuck? And uh, I mean, I was much younger, but. I think that I think that did strike me to my core um, in the same way that a murdered baby would uh, <laughs> old people because you have to understand they they didn't have cool shit like Pokemon so no they that's just, what I was gonna say know, all yeah. they had was What's the newspaper <laughs> or yeah. dead things like reality in their newspaper that's literally their, right. all their entertainment was so right. we get gotta catch him all they're like well they did too they just had to they had to do do it with stamps of all the dead babies throughout their life and they would get like a board and they'd be like oh yeah that baby went missing it's just the just, opposite yeah Not it's 151 dead babies uh that they uh well 150 that you could actually catch because one of them you can actually <laughs> get it wasn't actually in the game like that except through glitches yeah you had to go like get it from the other whoever had yeah it, it's the baby that you kill yourself that that's one. what yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what they had the next part of this the next theory i guess i don't really know how to separate this out is uh confabulation or false memories you remember when we talked about confabulation and betty barney hill uh, a little bit yeah false memory stuff so basically like a false memory is like untrue or distorted recollections and event some false memories contain elements of fact that resemble the actual event in question 
Uh, I see this all the time. Like I literally have a family member who like retells stories to me that I was a part of that I know to be completely wrong. They think it's true though. What they're telling me is I know they're not lying. They're, they're not doing it. They are sorry. I know they're lying, but they're just not doing it purposefully. That's what confabulation is. It's just like, can we guess what family member it is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it J Anthony? Uh, Anthony. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I heard my name. You're related to Christy, right? Yes. Again, uh, Christy is my mother who kept me in a closet. Well, how old, how old is Christy? Oh, we're the same age. Oh, yeah. How old is that? 39. <laughs> Confabulation. Okay. Confabulation happens a lot in well, all Well, hold times. on. Do you need me for anything else? That's it, sir. Okay. Well, R Rick, I do want you to know that I did lick all the Cheeto dust off my fingers before I touched your things. I, do you want to see me do it so you have proof? Here's how I do no, it. No, we're good. Thank I, you. I'm, I, I'm going. I'm doing it. One. <laughs> do all of them. Let's go. Commend, <laughs> yeah, fuck it. We Anthony. already started. <laughs> uh, RJ's pushing me out of the room. Oh, okay. Gagging. So I'm going to go now. Okay, fine. Hey, then. RJ's gagging or your gagging? Oh, my God. Yeah, that was disgusting. <laughs> It's, you should see when I have to do it for him. Oh, uh, you guys hang out a lot, eh? Best friends for life. Yeah, there's a lot of room in that closet at Christy and Bo's. <laughs> Seems like it's pretty empty over there, but anyways, that was a gay joke. Oh, uh, oh yeah, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so confabulation happens a lot with Alzheimer's patients and or patients with dementia. As you can imagine, they just make shit up and they don't think it's real. So as far as false memories go, uh, let's talk about it a bit. So memory is very suggestive, as we all know. I, I'm i in a supervisory role where I work, so I got to take shit tons of notes. Otherwise, my memory is not up. Like, I'm not going to remember things properly. That's why people take notes. Uh, I don't know if you guys take shit tons of notes, but, like, for me, it's, it's a necessity. Otherwise, I'm fucked. And we see it all the time with true crime, like with police when they're investigating crimes. Uh, you can get testimony from a witness that they think is completely true, and then the police will roll in like a TV or something and they show a video of what happened. And the witness is like completely shocked, like as if that's how that happened. I don't remember it like that at all. <clears throat> the opposite can also happen where you're trying to get a confession from a suspect and you convince them that they may have done it because all of the details you provided them. So then they'll just be like, okay, that makes sense that I did it. <laughs> Even though they didn't do it, memory is very suggestible. Um, there's a false memory test called the Dees Reedier and McDermott test task. Sorry. It's a way of showing how your brain can develop bias even without knowing. So during the test, people are given a list of things to recall. Uh, the example I read was like sewing related items like buttons, cotton, thread. So when asked to recall the items, they would often add sewing related items that were on the list, like a pin. Uh, they call this a lure word. So after reading the list, researchers will then ask the subjects to say whether or not they recall the words, including the lure word. Most times, subjects will recall the lure word, even though it wasn't on the original list. Your brain associates pin to the other words and just makes its own connections. The brain uh, stores similar memories together. So when you're trying to drum up one memory, another similar one is nearby, just ready to fuck you up. And they can easily merge together. Uh, like the Mandela thing overall, like Nelson Mandela's death in prison can be explained by a guy named Steve Biko. Uh, Steve Biko was another anti-apartheid activist who did die in prison in 1977. There was on uh, covers of newspapers and there was riots because of it. And people did talk about it uh, in the news. So when people think of Mandela dying in prison, they might just be misremembering Biko. Also, for the brain, it's also hard to remember specific details. Our brains just like to remember the gist of things. Like details are hard to keep track of especially when you're not specifically looking for details. So if you're just looking at something, if you're not looking for that one specific thing, your brain's not going to get that. They're just going to get the whole, the gist, right? Mm -hmm. We process information so quickly that sometimes our brain will see a lot of information and fill in the blanks based on past experiences. We talked about the filling of memory gaps in our Betty and Barney Hill episodes. Uh, like Baron St. Barris could just be that you suck at spelling or you know a bunch of Jews and your signs are showing. <laughs> You didn't look at the, I was looking for RJ's reaction and he had a weird face. So that was fantastic. Yeah, you nothing. didn't look at the details and it filled it in what you thought it should have been. 
Priming is another thing our brains do that can lead to false memories. In psychology, priming describes a phenomenon in which exposure to a stimulus directly influences a person's response to a subsequent stimulus. So if a person reads or hears a certain word or words associated with it will stick out easily. Like if you hear the word grass, you're more likely to recognize another related word like lawnmower quicker than you would an unrelated word like dishes. Hmm. If you were to ask a general question like, do you like concerts? that your brain would give you a certain response. But if you were to get like a more general, like, do you like uh, Taylor Swift concerts? That's more suggestive. And it has a better chance of putting a memory in your head about Taylor Swift rather than the open-ended question about the concert. In a 2020 study done by the Journal of Psychological Science found that when asked to recall information, 76% of adults made at least one detectable error. That's pretty fucking high. And that makes me trust my brain a lot less more, <laughs> a lot less more. Lot. Yeah. That makes me trust your brain a lot less more too. That's true. Any thoughts on that? Cause that's just like a basic, basic of how your brain can fuck you up. Yeah. I, I agree with pretty much all that. I think that humans are not as special and unique as we like to think we are when we tend to more than likely gravitate towards the same things. <laughs> On mass, for sure. I'm gonna go a little bit further on that. I I do believe people are very individual when they're by themselves. But as soon as you put everyone in a grouping of like a thousand or whatever, you start yeah. to notice patterns. You know, like there's a lot of things people do very similarly. Yeah, we're more hive mindy than we like to. Yeah, for sure. To pretend we are, aren't. All right. So next one, you ready? You good on that, Ricky? You don't have any comments about brain things? No, I'm, I I don't want to give it all away. Well, okay. he's not a human, so he doesn't identify with any of this. My hard drive works perfectly fine. Yeah, I know how you all work. My RAM is exceeding expectations today. Yeah. <laughs> so next next theory is alternative reality or parallel universe. Uh, this just talks about <sighs> fucking quantum physics and string theory. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's two uh, nine-inch thumbs down from Janthony. Uh, from across the <laughs> he doesn't like that one? Well, it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot. Like I'm trying to fucking wrap my head around string theory the past couple of days. And it's, it's just a lot, but it pertains to the concept that instead of us experiencing one singular timeline of events, but rather alternative universes or realities may be taking place and mixing with our timeline. Um, just to butt in real quick. Did you yeah. just insinuate that you're trying to learn string theory for this just, episode of the podcast? Just like the basics so I could vaguely get it. But like, oh, it's, okay. it's a lot. Like I'd have to fucking like legit do like. I was going to say, you know? maybe, maybe ease up on <laughs> some of the research. <laughs> I just wanted like a basic understanding. I got fucking two weeks. I got to finish this physics degree. <laughs> we got to get an episode out. <laughs> fucking 146 in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> We're in high demand. Yeah, it's, it just string theory just gives us like. There's a bunch of different realities, potentially. There's a theory about this shit that goes out. Like, multiverse theory is a thing. It's a lot. My point is this. Maybe for some reason, our reality and the realities of different timelines are all intersecting into our own. For whatever reason, that would be, I don't know, multiverse theory and shit like that. How could that happen? I don't really understand. Could it happen? Potentially, yes, scientifically. So that's as far as i'm going with the fucking multiverse string theory shit i just don't understand how you could mash two realities together there'd have to be like some sort of portal open and i'll talk about a little bit why they think this is happening but like that gets killed easy too um which is basically like the cern or whatever the large hedron collider some people theorize that cern the particle accelerator broke our universe and other universes started seeping into our own Many of the dates when people start recognizing Mandela effects line up closely with different experiments scientists were doing at CERN, which is untrue. This is what they were saying, but like, that's not true. Oh There's shit. That's the Mandela effect itself. Holy fuck, CERN. <laughs> How'd you guys do it? They were doing it before. Like the Mandela effect things happened before the first the particle accelerator was turned on. So what they're doing at CERN is just like smashing particles together to like see what the reactions are but like apparently this shit happens in space all the time and no portals are opening like it's just it's already happening we're just the first times we've controlled it in a controlled environment so we could like research it 
It's not like this the first particles that ever been mashed together with each other. You know what I mean? That's what I my, I was under the assumption for. But when I was reading the whole thing, it's like, no, this shit happens in space all the time. It's not we're not how do people come people. up with these wild like I I don't how you la- land on like, oh shit, we must misremember things because people were smashing particles together. I could show you. I have a little bit of a video here for you. Oh, uh, of the particle smashing? No, no, of a child explaining how the CERN could do this. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yeah, fuck it. Uh, everyone's on TikTok being like, look at how smart he is. I'm like, hey, it's a little child. Just making shit up. Just chill out, guys. Oh, I don't like him already. <laughs> okay, so back to, let's see if we can wrap this up, the Mandela effect, and let's have at least one human being who might watch this potentially be able to understand what you're saying. Right. So when our universe was destroyed over here. And this was, you think, when CERN Super Collider did its experiment? Large Hadron Collider, yeah. Or the the, the Hadron? L- Large Hadron Collider, Large, right. Okay. And um, so after our universe and timeline was destroyed, we were, let's zoom this in a lot, zoom, 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 zoom. And the universe that's directly next to ours, it's just directly next to ours, Energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred from form to form. But if there are an infinite number of universes, then there's 100% chance that this happened, at least maybe in another universe, maybe not ours. Then again, there's also an infinite chance that this is our universe. So if this one was eliminated, all the energy from this universe created or transferred a universe that was right next to us. So So the the original universe is um, mirror, mirror on the wall. The, right. the transfer to universe is magic mirror on the wall. Right, and even if you um, have quantum data or other things that possibly could help calculate these claims, then you'll find that there is a fluctuation pattern of which our universe is on a similar plane. So if this is our plane, there's universe in this plane, which means that this is a larger dip and this is a smaller dip. So that way there's a fluctuation in our reality of actually things that are real, that are real to us, but are different in other realities. And there's a consistent fluctuation. Uh, all right. I think this fluctuation is known as Mandela uh, effect for some things. Th- and a lot of things and did this guy, did this kid are... get producer credit on Loki? That is the most traumatized child I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> You know, uh, tell me, tell me he, more about the universes. Tell me more. Yeah, whatever he's burying underneath all of that fucking multiverse shit has got to be horrid and dark. <laughs> and in this universe, you tell me you love me. Yeah, that's not this one. That's not yeah. this one, buddy. <laughs> Walk, <laughs> walking in. Eventually. Oh, we just <laughs> missed it. Keep trying harder. He he, did, he he was like fucking four, and he walked into his mom's room with the jigsaw puzzle and watched her blow her f- fucking brains out. And then he was just like, <laughs> maybe there's a, a world where this didn't happen. <laughs> I think he's just homeschooled way too much. That's just my opinion. I thought that was young Rick. When I saw it, I was like, is this Ricky where, when he was wh- a child? Where is, is he now? Child? Uh, uh, I'll show you. I'll say, I'll put the video. I'll give you the video after you can laugh. There's a part one to that that he just kind of babbles on. I I thought that was the funnier one because he starts like zoom in, zoom in. He's like making the fucking drawings, and everyone's like, I don't know what you're talking about, kid. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So the 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 whole CERN breaking our universe and because energy doesn't ever get destroyed, it gets replaced so, or whatever put somewhere else so it got all shipped to a different dimension where like when that double all the energy here and just explode us or something like i don't anyways that's the cern broke our universe i don't know i would need him to explain it to me i I guess so energy just like there's science that explains what happens to energy for sure oh my god it just you know my problem with all this stuff is is that we're believing children well that (laughs) yeah that for start don't ever believe children for anything Ever. <laughs> Don't listen to kids, no matter what they tell you. <laughs> Ever. When they tell you about Uncle Ra- Uncle Nelson, just shut him up and send him to the room with a piece of paper. <laughs> um, no, it's just like it, it, it all has like the, it, the the wildly similar flavor. It's like it's like diet QAnon. And then it's like it, 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 there's there's not. Oh, much. that sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Listen, pal, with the finance stuff you get into, you're only like eight or ten websites away. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm eight or ten websites away from QAnon. <laughs> <laughs> he is QAnon. <laughs> Let's keep up that narrative, boy. I'm not Q, but I'm R. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's just like all you need to do is just like have like someone like direct you to like one YouTube video and then you're an anti Semite. Like that's just how it all feels. It's just like <laughs> it, it's like conspiracy theory, right wing insanity with training wheels, like before those fall off and then your family stops talking to you. Yeah. Well, you're not going to really like the next one then. Okay, a lot of people talk about how this is like some government conspiracy and they're erasing our childhoods and changing it with whatever. Like, that is a lot of work, man. Nobody's doing that. Yeah, for what? But I did want to put it out there. For fucking Kazam, Shazam, whatever. Like, Yeah, that's... They got me. <laughs> Nobody wants they to learn from me. the Jew bears. That's what it is. They want you to learn <laughs> from nice white bears like the rest of us. It's anti-Semitic, the whole thing. <laughs> and we're better off for it. <laughs> Berenstein Bears would have kept going. Think of what Palestine would look like right now. We're just, thank God they got raced the Jew Bears. All right. <laughs> hey, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Yes, J Anthony, how are I you? I do not care for the way that this type of conversation is going. You're not. I am, it out I of am this Anthony office. Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just. <laughs> Do you, That's funny. do you know what the J in Janthony stands for? No, let's hear it. Jewish! <laughs> How dare you besmirch my history and my people? I wasn't. I was just uh, you, theorizing why they would. I come in here, lure me in with these long bags of Cheetos and your giant <laughs> Xbox controllers. And you expect me to listen to this? Well, no, I'm just theorizing why the government would do that. And they've known to hate Jews their entire time. So that's kind of what... Not me. I love Jews. Especially you. I I am going to sit here and do nothing and listen to the rest of this. Okay. But I am going to do it with a scowl on my face Perfect. and my fingers <laughs> tinted. Which means I have to stand. Okay, well then, the conspiracy, the cover-up, I don't know what it is. If it's not anti-Semitic, I don't know what it is. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Okay? Anthony? Oh, uh, he's... He's he's pouting. You can tell by the way that his fingers are tented. You see him. <laughs> it's really creepy when he does that. It it's like because there's the size of an actual tent. <laughs> so yeah, unless you guys can think of a good reason there'd be a conspiracy or like a cover up on this one, like meh, that's a nothing burger in my opinion. Well, we wouldn't remember it. That's true. They covered it up successfully. The other ones just leaked through. The next one is the world is a simulation. Now Rick has wanted to talk about this on the show since we started the show. Maybe not on the show. Not really. Because he really doesn't care much about the show, but for sure wants to talk about my, it. My position <laughs> is known probably to every single one of our listeners. Get me wrong. You can't. We live in a simulation. Burden of proof doesn't really fall on the, the naysayers with how, how strongly you're, you're championing this claim. <laughs> what do you mean? I Prove me wrong. Prove that, I, prove that we don't no, live in a simulation. That's not the way that works. <laughs> I live in America. That absolutely is the way it works. We're actually going to talk about <laughs> what he just said in a few seconds here. So I've tried to convince him many times to write an episode about simulation theory. Uh, yeah, but the only thing to talk about is the is the, the double slit experiment. Yeah, but there's also other things that have been done. Well, I mean, there's other things, but they're all just anecdotal. Just so if anybody knows, maybe Rick's going to correct me on this. Simulation theory states that we're either controlled or confined by other beings. All of us. Like the Matrix. Right? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, everybody can have their own flavor of simulation. It's the other yeah, one where there's, there's, uh, we're long lost civilization that like downloaded all our consciousness onto like a computer and we're gone. So they're trying, somebody's just trying to like reactivate and see what this. We're just li reliving history. There's that one. I've it seen could too. be that. I, I mean, if you if you subscribe to simulation theory, the most likely one would be that we are actually just in some sort of a what we would call a computer simulation, trying to solve a problem that our actual current humanity whatever that may be, can't solve. I don't know if it's as controlled as we think it is. I actually think it's the opposite because time is all relative to us. I think it's the, the equivalent of how we do machine learning, where it's basically like to us, it happens very quickly. For all we know to them, it's happening very quickly. Yeah, no, for sure. If it's a, if it's like a computer, if we're in a simulation, we the million years could go like by like that in a simulation, right? But like 
right. we wouldn't experience it in that amount of time. It would be what our relative so, time is to the whole thing. So we're 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 in one of those marbles for that things rolling around at the end of Men in Black is what you're saying. Yeah, right. exactly. Cool. Correct. And did we all just see a post about that like a couple days ago before this episode? Yeah, Mandela yeah. effect could be uh, if there was sort some sort of like error in the simulation and the programmers went to fix it, it might explain like, oh, these little minor changes happen. We all remember it, but they had to change some sort of part of the code that we didn't really understand that that, that could be part of it. Or it's maybe the changes are put there be. purposely to, uh, by whoever's running the simulation to see how it would react, like adding stimulus to the whole thing to like, the reason a lot of people like me and our, Rick were actually talking about this uh, last week and how like aliens might just be like, whoever's controlling us, throwing aliens at us to see how we react to aliens or whatever. Yeah, my actual belief is I don't think we'd be able to see anything that went wrong in a simulation because we are the simulation ourselves. I don't think we could see problems within our, ourselves. It's kind of like a, be like a code base trying to fix itself. I don't actually think we, I don't think that's feasible. I think it's more so just like, I still subscribe to the idea that we're in a simulation simulation just to be clear but i think it's more of like this is the way our brains work in this simulation and our brains are just neurons creating patterns in a specific firing what in the way that they fire and over time if you don't use the way that your different brain the different parts of your brain connect the neuron pathways and it just goes away it just so happens that there are some of these events where we build these neuron pathways in such a specific way that there's a finite number of scenarios and we just so happen to talk about those finite scenarios but i do still think we're in a simulation i just think that's the way our brains work in the simulation yeah, yeah take it out of the the simulation wrapping paper and that's where i am too okay and then put it back into the simulation wrapping paper and that's where i am yeah i don't i don't agree with the simulation thing I, although like why not it, who cares that's the whole real thing for me if we're gonna but you agree with the firing going. of the neuron pathways sure but like does it have to be because of a simulation or just that that's just the randomization of the universe and like it's it's so random that it's starting to develop patterns because so many things have happened over the amount of time it's existed maybe we're only in a simulation to figure out the the mandela effect because it happens yeah. to them and they um, and they want to know why it happens to them god damn it i'd be so upset they also had a psychic <laughs> that, that was convinced that ghost was oh causing it and they were like no you dumb bitch <laughs> fuck you fiona broom we're gonna fucking we're definitely gonna figure this out with our simulation. God damn it! We're just some like utopian startup, like that Fiona Broom is the fucking face yeah. of, and ugh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or 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 it's like we invented shoes or something, and they never <laughs> ever had shoes, and that's just what. Now they're like, what's the next thing? And then everything since they've already had, and they're like, oh, more shoes. Which is it's fucking insane that they could make uh a, 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 such an elaborate just entity that is a, a, a thoroughly like <laughs> but we don't we don't know that that's hard we, we don't we, like i mean think about just like the way our brains work like we don't actually even see everything in our reality we fill in the blanks so for all we know they actually only created like 10 percent of it and our existence is just filling in the rest of it we're just the idiots that we don't know how to create su better simulations well if you knew the mm. beginning you know what i mean if you knew how to like seed a what is now then it would probably be easy you just have to put time to it you just put the starting ingredients and then just add time yeah. to a simulation right but you just since we don't know how it started it becomes like it's really seems complex but it could be just like you just throw water on some argon just throw around some fucking like yeah. uh, hydrogen that's and then just is. that's how it does like I, i'm just saying, a couple like, cheat codes and you're in yeah exactly who knows how many times do you think they've restarted the simulation not enough. Fucking end yeah. it right now, please. Right, <laughs> um, right off the bat. Just yeah. We were yeah. talking about that. I I would click the button every fucking chance I got. Out of those number of times, how many how many times do you think cleavers were a common household item? <laughs> roughly 80, I don't 90, know. 90, it doesn't ago. matter because not this time. So mm -hmm. that's the universe mm -hmm. I live in. If you and fucking Max wanna find a different one, enjoy it. Hmm. All right, we got a couple more here, and then we'll talk. We'll we'll finish her off. So time slips is the next one. Like so much time traveling, fucking shit up. Uh, when they come back in time, I just don't agree. Who? With somebody, Who? whoever. Nelson Mandela just slipping through time. Sure. Nah. I don't. I, I I am more of like time travel doesn't exist. It's more like jumping to a different reality. Like if we could do time travel, it's not real time travel because it, it would have happened already, right? Some people would have already time traveled because it's already happened. 
So, like, if you're jumping back in time... Mm, I disagree. Then it wouldn't have happened? How did it not happen? I think a time travel... Because if time is all happening at the same time... Well, okay, so that's kind of confusing. But if time is all <laughs> happening together, right? That's And that's the theory, is that past, present, future is all occurring essentially at the it's, same path. It just is, yes. But you have to be able to get from... Right, you have to get from one to the other. I think you need... I'm, I'm along for the ride because... He's going to keep avoiding the word time, and I want to see yeah. many different <laughs> think, synonyms. He can I think you, with. I think you need essentially like a bridge, right, to get from one end to the other, whether whichever way you're going. So it's like crossing the layers, and I don't think you can go back further than what you've actually built because you don't have the other end of the bridge. So I don't think that it would have been existing already. I think it's literally like until we have it, we can't travel back and forth within time. See, I don't think we tra- we can travel within our own dimension, though. I think if you're going to time travel, you're tra- if you want to go back to 1600s, you're jumping into a, the 1600s in a different dimension that hasn't had that. I don't know, though, because I, I really think what it. it's all going to come down to is because it's like moving matter. And we have to be able to like almost like break ourselves down and put ourselves back together on the other end. So it almost feels like or you open a wormhole, a vacuum and like a vacuum bag. Right. You need both pieces to actually get through the tunnel. Yeah, but if you make a tunnel, you don't need to separate. Your, you just walk through the tunnel. You can figure out a way. To yeah, but I think there needs to be the infrastructure the on the other end. That's why I don't think. That's why I think this idea of like, if anybody were ever going to invent time travel, we would know because they would have already invented time travel, is a fallacy in my mind. Like, I think the reason that it doesn't exist yet is because you need the path to get from one to the other. That's the way I see time. We struggle with time, time travel in that time. one because I, I have lots of theories on time. I've thought about time travel a lot and I've read up a, bu- a bunch about it. But yeah, I don't think this is time travel though. I don't think if there were noticeable differences, if if let's say we stay on the same universe or reality and you're time traveling, all the changes would have happened instantly before. Like say if someone traveled to before I was born, I would never know that those things existed. Or like when I was 12, they would have always been that to me because reality changed. I just don't think it's time travel. That's stupid. But do you think, like, for the Shazam thing, somebody could have got, like, a pre-release DVD, and then it flopped, and they went back in time to, like, eradicate all of them, but they missed one, and then it just, like... Somebody has, like, a... There's the the one DVD pre-release out there somewhere. Just nobody wants to say anything. Like, some Russian oligarch has it in his basement. But how crazy is it... Who did you say was supposedly in this movie? Sinbad. How crazy is it that Sinbad might have a time machine, but Justin Trudeau does blackface and nobody wipes that off the face of the earth, you know? <laughs> That's uh, like... Sinbad mm. has gone on the record denying he's ever been in a, a genie movie, just so everyone knows. Well, I mean, if you're going to go back in time and get rid of it, you're not going to fucking cop to it once, <laughs> you know? he's probably He probably got half of his money back from the time travel service. Okay, Sinbad has a time machine. I like that. I like where this is going. This A lot yeah. of things could be different. If it wasn't for that goddamn Sinbad. All right, so the last thing I have to say in here is the internet. You add the internet to the mix and stupid shit happens. So many of the previous theories are unfalsifiable meaning that you can't prove that they aren't true just as much as you can't prove that they are true like god except fun and not stupid i think this might be just the internet's fault the whole thing uh the mandela effect can be traced back as far as the internet not really before that people never really talked about it fiona broom started a giant game of telephone suggesting something uh that people quote unquote remembered and passing it along making other people unquote unquote remember then, before you know it, there are Facebook groups, TikTok pages, and YouTube channels fully dedicated to the idea. Entire no. communities are built around the idea. Uh, no. Ri- originally based on someone's shitty memory. Sorry, what are you yeah. saying? No, no. There's no way that woman had that much influence on society. I <laughs> Patently false. I'm Absolutely sorry. not. I'm sorry, but it's it's like... I own a lighter, and I can start a gigantic fire from a little lighter. It it, it doesn't mean somebody hmm. she could start I a don't big know fire. If fire is exactly the same. Why not? Analogy. It's the exact same. It spreads the same, like out of control. People just can't fucking put it out. Fire is bright. Fiona is not. <laughs> See, but I could go light a fire right now and like burn my house down, or I could just say words here, and a bunch of people in Singapore now believe that we live in a simulation. <laughs> Yeah, but then those they're kind of different. They're different scales. Like 
but it's just the fun. That's the whole reason this thing caught on. It's like, how does anything catch on? How do Beanie Babies become a thing? Or like fucking Cabbage Patch Kids? It's yeah. just the, the right time, right place. Mm. You know what I mean? So there's an extensive study over uh, t- 100,000 news stories that were discussed over Twitter, conducted over 10 years, showed that lies, conspiracies, and rumors won out over truth every time. Not every time, but 70% of the time. So if false information can be passed from person to person at the speed the internet does, then eventually these lies get pushed into people's memories as truths. Maybe I never thought there was a movie called Shazam, and I only remember it after it came across my desk at some point. To me, it's real, but it's probably just a false memory that I implanted there by accident because of the internet. And I think the internet spread this thing. Like, it's just a perfect timing for all of it, I think, personally. And false memories, people being dumb want to believe sensationalistic shit it just is what it is that's the serious answer from richard now let's hear the fucked up answer from everybody else <laughs> how fucked up is it that a civil rights activist has this as his legacy oh yeah a that's bunch of the... fucking like just first world people just arguing about what luxury items had different names <laughs> There was a spelling mistake. I saw it. I swear to God, it was Stouffer's Stouffer Stove Top <laughs> Stuffing. Not Kraft. I used to eat crates of that shit. <laughs> I would know. If anyone would know, it would be me. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very sad because I, when I went, do you guys know anything about you're like, uh, he's president, right? <laughs> well, we yeah, all, no, we know, uh, all we know is that people, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of sad, actually. Thanks yeah. for that's a good way to think about it. <laughs> did Did he suffer for equal rights, or is really all we care about the number of e's in the word Febreze? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Uncle Nelly. It has a lot to do with uh, thanks. Not the first time. Uh, <laughs> makes you think about a lot of the like. A lot of these are just like it's an e. There's one more e. There's an a. It's just a spelling mistake and like. Yeah. It's, exploded which is i don't know thanks sulu i so blame george takei too like he's fucking definitely had a big part in that yep no crazy theory i talked about everything you wanted to talk about in this there ricky yeah no i i really just think it's the way our brains all form in the same way we're all built off the the same dna it kind of makes sense that we've come to the same conclusions when we're given enough examples of information legit think it's just memory plus quickness of shitty information yeah. being spread it's yeah that's what i'm saying yeah it's just like collective consciousness like whether it's like pop culture or whether it's just like rick says the way that i mean that's what i'm saying like humans aren't unique in the way that we're like ultimately built or coded um thank you welcome sorry i didn't want to real religion (laughs) donate money now it's all ones and zeros either way it's ones and zeros right like we're just like every other religion we accept your money (laughs) now Um. Yeah, I, I think it's it's all a little bullshit. Well, thank you, uh, Jan- what is your name again? Jam Janderson. Jander. <gasps> How dare you! <laughs> I have half a mind to punch you in the face with this thirty-inch circumference fist. <laughs> Well, I learned. I like appreciate you bringing this to the table because I did learn a lot about a lot of things in this, especially about gravity. I didn't really realize we didn't really understand gravity a lot. We can't really explain it. So thanks for that. So thanks I'd, for this. Well, you're going to have a very good understanding of gravity when when you realize that I've been manhandling the Xbox in ways I shouldn't. <laughs> I just wanted to see what it looked like upside down, and well. Sorry. Oh, no. The whole Xbox? It, well, no, it's not whole anymore. Oh, you piece of shit. I'm going to fucking kill this guy. Ah! Rick, shoot him. Shoot him. I'm, 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 spider fingers activate. I don't have my gun in New York. Damn, dude. Did you see how fast he just crawled out of here on his fingers? I, I'm i going to be honest. I did not meet him until this morning. <laughs> it's still your best friend, though, right? I was. Yeah. And then I. Well, another one solved, boys. Another one for the books. What are, what are we saying it is? It's just people are dumb. Solved. Yeah. Solved. Yeah. People are dumb and they and they and they get excited about things that make them feel special. Or ghosts. But yeah, also I, ghosts. I forgot it was ghosts. That's right. It, Thanks, Fiona. Dumb ghosts. Thanks, Fiona Broom.
go go actually listen to Fiona's stuff. She could use a couple clicks. That her thing had <laughs> six hundred twenty one views. So that's it needs to stay there. No, no. Let's let's give her. She's the, probably made a lot of money off of her books. I have a strong yeah, feeling. Yeah, and honestly, if 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 she did start Mandela Effect, she has enough exposure. Fuck her. <laughs> well, why wouldn't she name it like after herself though? I just to ruin a nice humanitarian yeah. name, <laughs> like exactly. the, Fian- the Fiona Shadow Effect. You know, yeah, yeah. The Fiona- that would have been perfect. That would actually, and it would have made name. sense as to why. <laughs> I just watched Private Dicks and I think RJ's the funniest. What? Come on!